नमस्कार वॉम वेलकम टू वर्ल्ड न्यूज एंड इंडियन परस्पेक्टिव ऑन ऑल इंडिया रेडियो दिस इज आर एस रघु एंड विद मी इज मनोज सिंह राणा ब्रिंगिंग ग्लिम्सेस ऑफ द मेजर डेवलपमेंट्स ऑफ द डे फ्रॉम अक्रॉस द ग्लोब ओवर द नेक्स्ट हाफ एन आवर वी शैल ब्रिंग यू द लेटेस्ट फ्रॉम द वर्ल्ड ऑफ पोलिटिक्स इकोनॉमी स्पोर्ट्स एंटरटेनमेंट एंड मोर दी हेडलाइंस प्राइम मिनिस्टर नरेन्द्र मोदी रिव्यूज प्रिपरेशन एंड ऑपरेशन बींग अंडरटेकन बाय आर्म्ड फोर्सेज इन कॉम्बैटिंग कोविड नाइन्टीन पैंडमिक रिटायर्ड मेडिकल पर्सनल बींग रीकॉल टू वर्क इन कोविड फेसिलिटीज यूएस लिफ्ट एक्सपोर्ट बैन ऑन द इसेंशियल रॉ मटीरियल कोविड नाइन्टीन वैक्सीन प्रोडक्शन इन इंडिया एयर इंडिया ब्रिंग्स थ्री हंड्रेड एटीन ऑक्सीजन कॉन्सेंट्रेटर्स फ्रॉम द यूनाइटेड स्टेट्स चाइना सस्पेंड्स ऑल इट्स कार्गो फ्लाइट्स टू इंडिया फॉर फिफ्टीन डेज India and Japan reaffirm cooperation to overcome recent challenges over telephonic interaction between prime ministers of both the countries. Nomadland wins Oscar for best picture at the 93rd Academy Awards and in IPL cricket Kolkata Knight Riders take on Punjab Kings. As the number of covid cases are on the rise again we appeal to our listeners not to lower the guard follow all the precautions and all those above 45 years to get vaccinated without any hesitation stay safe and protected by following these three simple steps wear a face mask maintain two gaz ki doori for social distancing and focus on hand and face hygiene and now the news in detail Prime Minister Narendra Modi on Monday reviewed the work being done by the armed forces in combating COVID-19 including the efforts to enhance medical capacities and utilizing human resources. The Chief of Defence Staff CDS General Bipin Rawat called on Mr Modi and they reviewed the preparations and operations being undertaken by the armed forces to deal with the pandemic. The Chief of Defence Staff briefed the prime minister that all medical personnel from armed forces who have retired or taken premature retirement in the last 2 years are being recalled to work in covid facilities within proximity of their present place of residence other medical officers who retired earlier have also been requested to make their services available for consultation through medical emergency helplines the prime minister was also informed that all medical officers on staff appointments and command headquarters corps headquarters division headquarters and similar headquarters of navy and air force will be employed at hospitals the chief of defense staff informed mr modi that nursing personnel are being employed in ra- large numbers to complement the doctors at the hospitals the prime minister was also briefed that oxygen cylinders available with armed forces in various establishments will be released for hospitals the cds also said that they are creating medical facilities in large numbers and wherever possible military medical infrastructure will be made available to civilians mr modi also reviewed the operations being undertaken by indian air force to transport oxygen and other essentials in india and abroad prime minister also discussed with cds that kendriya and the rajya sanik welfare boards and officer posted in various headquarters in veteran cells may be instructed to coordinate the services of veterans to extend the reach to maximum extent possible including in remote areas prime minister narendra modi on monday had a telephonic conversation with us president joe biden the leaders discussed the evolving covid situation in both the countries in detail Mr Modi thanked President Biden for the support being provided by the United States to India. In a tweet Mr Modi said his discussion with the US president also underscored the importance of smooth and efficient supply chains of vaccine raw materials and medicines. He said India US healthcare partnership can address the global challenge of COVID-19. The US government has decided to lift the export ban on the essential raw materials required by the ma- vaccine manufacturers in India for production of COVID-19 vaccine. This development comes after National Security Advisor Ajit Doval and his US counterpart Jake Sullivan had a phone conversation regarding the spike in COVID-19 infections across the country. Mr Sullivan affirmed America's solidarity with India. This also comes after several US lawmakers voiced their concerns over the covid-19 situation in india they exerted pressure pressure on the biden administration to extend assistance release vaccines and other raw materials critical for india 
White House said U.S. has identified sources of specific raw materials urgently required for Indian manufacture of the Covishield vaccine that will immediately be made available for India. In a tweet, U.S. President Joe Biden said that America is determined to help India deal with the spike in coronavirus cases, just as India helped Americans when U.S. hospitals were strained early in the pandemic. Civil Aviation Minister Hardeep Singh Puri today said that Air India has brought 318 oxygen concentrators to India on its New York-Delhi flight on Monday. He said all efforts to strengthen India's fight against the pandemic are on. He said, let there be no doubt, will turn the tide. Ambient air contains about 20% oxygen and 78% nitrogen. An oxygen concentrator is a device that takes in ambient air and filters out nitrogen from it to concentrate the oxygen molecules in the treated mixture. Meanwhile, External Affairs Minister Dr. S.J. Shankar on Monday had a telephonic conversation with Foreign Secretary of the UK Dominic Raab. Both discussed the cooperation to address different aspects of the COVID challenge. They also reviewed progress in the bilateral agenda. The UK government on Sunday announced that more than 600 pieces of vital medical equipment will be sent to India to support the country in its fight against COVID-19. Government on Monday said that more than 14 crore 19 lakh vaccine doses have been administered in the country till now. Nearly 93 lakh healthcare workers have been administered the first dose of vaccine and over 60 lakh have received the second dose. Briefing the media in New Delhi, Joint Secretary in the Health Ministry, Love Agrawal, said that the management of COVID-19 across states and districts to follow three main principles, containment, clinical management and community engagement. He said there is a need for continued focus on physical distancing measures. The Joint Secretary said the use of masks coupled with physical distancing can lower the transmission. He said research has shown if no physical distancing measures are followed, One person can infect 406 people in 30 days. Mr. Agrawal said rational use of oxygen and appropriate prescription of drugs such as remdesivir and tocilizumab are critical in fighting against pandemic. He said many people are found to be occupying hospital beds out of panic. He urged people to take admission only a doctor's advice. Additional Secretary in the Home Ministry, Piyush Goyal, said India has enough medical oxygen available. He said the transportation of oxygen tankers is a major challenge. Mr. Goyal said India is ordering oxygen tankers from abroad on a purchase or hiring basis. He said using real-time tracking, the government is monitoring the movement of oxygen tankers. Mr. Goyal appealed to people not to panic over the current COVID-19 situation. Director Ames New Delhi, Dr. Randeep Guleria, said we have to reduce the number of cases and use hospital resources optimally. He said the judicious use of oxygen is very important. Dr. Guleria said right now there is unnecessary panic. He said unnecessary panic is causing more harm than good. Dr. Guleria said remdesivir was not found to have any mortality benefits and it is not right to think of it as a magic bullet. He said it is only useful in moderate to severe cases. The union government has directed states and union territories to ensure that liquid oxygen is exclusively used for medical purposes only. The exception to nine industries has also withdrawn in order to enhance availability of medical oxygen in the country. Union Home Secretary and Chairman National Executive Committee Ajay Bhalla has written to Chief Secretaries of States and Administrators of Union Territories in this regard. Mr. Bhalla has asked all manufacturing units to maximize their production of liquid oxygen and make it available to the government for use of medical purposes only with immediate effect until further orders. All stocks of liquid oxygen should also be made available to the government for use of medical purposes. Mr. Bhalla said no exception is allowed to any industry with regard to use of liquid oxygen. China's state-run Sichuan Airlines has suspended all its cargo flights to India for 15 days, causing major disruption to private traders' efforts to procure the much-needed oxygen concentrators and other medical supplies from China. This happened despite Beijing saying that India and China are in communication for COVID-19 assistance to India. The suspension of cargo flights came as a surprise to agents and freight forwarders who are frantically trying to procure the oxygen concentrators from China. More in this report 
from Beijing. In a surprising move, Chinese state-owned airline suspends its freight operations to India, citing surging COVID-19 cases, despite Beijing saying that it wants to assist India in COVID-19 management. Chinese Foreign Ministry spokesperson did not comment on this matter. He said that China is ready to provide support and help to the best of its capabilities if India makes specific demands. There are also complaints of Chinese manufacturers hiking the prices by 35 to 40 percent. The freight charges have been increased to over 20 percent. Following the decision of Sichuan Airlines to cancel flights, it becomes very challenging to rush the supplies as they have to be routed to Singapore and other countries through different airlines, which delays the much-needed supplies. The decision, the suspension of the flights owing to the coronavirus situation in India, is surprising as there is no crew change in India and the same crew flies the aircraft back. The Chinese cargo flights, besides the shipping services, have been operational throughout the pandemic, such as supplies of lucrative mobile phone equipment as well as a lot of other Chinese exports to India. But during the real need for a humanitarian cause, Chinese state and airlines backed off. Anshman Mishra for World News, All India Radio, Beijing. This is All India Radio giving you the world news. Three steps to stay protected and stay safe from COVID-19. Wear face mask, do gaz ki duri to maintain social distancing, maintain hand and face hygiene. Welcome back to the world news. Prime Minister Narendra Modi on Monday interacted with Prime Minister of Japan Yoshihide Suga over phone. During the interaction, both the leaders discussed progress in various ongoing bilateral initiatives. The two leaders discussed the COVID-19 situation and exchanged views on various regional and global challenges posed by the pandemic. They appreciated the support and facilitation provided to resident citizens in each other's country during the pandemic and agreed to continue such coordination. Prime Minister Modi thanked Prime Minister Suga for providing assistance to India for combating the pandemic. Both the leaders highlighted the importance of close India-Japan cooperation to overcome these challenges. They stressed on working together to create resilient, diversified and trustworthy supply chains, ensuring reliable supply of critical materials and technologies and developing new partnerships in manufacturing and skill development. In today's hotspot section, we bring you a discussion on the wide-ranging cooperation between India and the US from tackling climate change to COVID-19. In conversation are former diplomat Anil Badwa and journalist Simran Sodhi. Ambassador Vadva, when we see the India-US relationship, and we have seen this bilateral relationship develop over the last few years, there has been a lot of cooperation in defense, security. It's a strategic partnership. And now we also see this recent pact between India and the US on climate change and how both countries have committed to work for a greener future. And also the US standing shoulder to shoulder with India in the COVID thing. How do you think this then boosts the bilateral relationship? I think you are right. On both fronts, I think United States and India are cooperating quite closely. But I would like to point out that this is not as smooth as it seems on the surface. Because if you recall when John Kerry, the special representative of the United States on climate, was in India, he had an extensive dialogue with a number of agencies. And it was during this visit, he was told how much India has done to actually make its mark on the climate front. So ranging from the International Solar Alliance and setting up the International Solar Alliance headquarters in India, but also the fact that India's per capita carbon footprint is actually 60% lower than the global average. And that is because India's lifestyle is rooted in sustainable traditional practices. So India is still following the philosophy of back to basics, which must be an important pillar of the economic strategy in the post-COVID era. Having said that, actually, India is targeting a 2030 GDP emissions intensity. So that is the volume of emissions uh, per unit of GDP that is 33 to 35 percent below 2005 levels. And it also seeks to have 40 percent of power, which is generated from non-fossil fuel sources by 2030. And this is despite India's development challenges that India has taken many bold steps on clean energy, on energy efficiency, afforestation, and biodiversity. So that's why India is amongst a few countries whose uh, nationally defined contributions are two degrees Celsius compatible. And this is exactly what was conveyed to Mr. John Kerry 
And this is exactly what Prime Minister Modi also conveyed at the Climate Change Summit, which happened on the 22nd of April this year. So that's as far as climate is concerned. Now, we've had some statements which have been coming out of the United States on Saturday and Sunday last, which uh, actually have come out fully in support of additional support for India amidst the COVID-19 surge. But we must have to see this in the background of what the initial response of the U.S. official spokesperson was and the commotion that it caused within the United States and within India because it was a flat statement about U.S. foreign policy and how U.S. interests were paramount in that regard. So after that, we've had some very encouraging statements from Mr. Blinken. And then we also had a conversation between Mr. Jake Sullivan and our National Security Advisor, Mr. Ajit Doval. And thereafter, we've seen that the United States has committed raw materials and vaccines. Also, the commitment to deploy officials, which will help in the COVID response in India. Also, arrangement of oxygen concentrators, for example. So, raw material, therapeutics, tests, protective equipment, etc. And um, has also promised to airlift uh, you know, oxygen generators and concentrators, remdesivir, etc., which is the antiviral drug, from nearby bases. What's more important, though, is the promise that raw material will be provided for the manufacture of vaccine in the next 48 hours. This is in addition to the rapid diagnostic test kits. And um, if you recall, India has been asking for the need to lift these restrictions, which have been imposed on the export of critical raw materials and equipment for some time now. In fact, the first virtual summit of the Quad leaders in March had talked about the need of the four nations to work together in vaccine production and delivery. But when it came to the crunch, all that India had received so far from the U.S. was some silence, you know, defense of the already existing regulations in the United States, in which it was America first again. So that has been reversed, and the United States leadership has let go of that policy now, which must be welcomed in India. Ambassador Vadva, you were talking about the climate summit, which was attended by Prime Minister Modi, and it saw about 40 world leaders come together, and the U.S. president hosted this virtual summit. We've also seen in the analysis that has come after the climate change summit, which has argued that a forward-looking policy has to envision green development in a new way. Funding has to be provided for the green technologies as compensation for the emissions space lost by poorer countries. Do you feel that this is an issue that richer nations understand that when countries like India are trying to opt for technologies which are greener, which will help keep the environment clean and fight climate change, are they willing to make that monetary contribution also? This is a struggle that the developing countries have faced for quite some time now, despite the fact that there is a global compact on this principle that there would be partnerships to create templates for sustainable development in the developing countries because they need affordable access to green finance and also to clean technologies. However, that's not been forthcoming so far. And the tendency has been to actually paper over those agreements and to move forward with setting new standards of global emissions. So it was at this summit on 22nd April, therefore, that Prime Minister Modi actually launched a energy and climate partnership with President Joe Biden at the Leaders' Summit on Climate. And the main focus of this document was that India, as a climate-responsible developing country, welcomes its partners to create templates for sustainable development in India. And also, this is in keeping with the past promises of developed countries, because developing countries need affordable access, as I said, to green finance and clean technologies. So, India-U.S. Climate and Clean Energy Agenda 2030 Partnership document is basically aimed to help mobilize investments to demonstrate clean technologies and enable this green collaboration And its aim would be to, in fact, demonstrate and scale innovative clean technologies which are needed to decarbonize important sectors. That includes industry, transportation, power, and buildings. And then build the capacity to measure and to manage and adapt to the risk of climate change-related impacts. Obviously, in future, this will have to proceed along two tracks. One is the Strategic Clean Energy Partnership and the Climate Action and Finance Mobilization Dialogue, which will then build on and subsume a range of existing processes. And this is what has been agreed upon. It's a very far-reaching agreement as far as India is concerned. 
but the fact remains that India is, as I said earlier, amongst very few developing countries whose nationally defined contributions are two degrees Celsius compatible. And it's also aimed at achieving the Paris Agreement's objective of keeping the global warming to considerably below two degrees Celsius, preferably 1.5 degrees Celsius. And that is why the promise that India has made of targeting a 2030 GDP emissions intensity that is 30 to 35% below 2005 levels and uh, to have 40% of power generated from non-fossil fuel sources by 2030. These are both important promises which India is keeping up to till now. Mr. Vadva, we have seen President Joe Biden come and he has reversed many of the policies of the previous U.S. President Donald Trump, who had very famously also called climate change a hoax. We've seen President Biden change the rules. He has also promised cuts in emissions by 50 to 52 percent by 2030 over 2005 levels. The point is that a lot of people say that transfer of technologies will have to take place for the India-US agreements to yield results. Do you feel that the fact that President Biden and Prime Minister Modi both are showing the political will and leadership to take this forward and we would see these very substantive changes which is the fact that the U.S. institutions are willing to share knowledge and subsidize transfer of technologies. Do you feel that we should feel optimistic about the way forward? Well, we've had an extensive dialogue on this issue, which uh, we discussed just now during the visit of Mr. John Kerry to India, where all these issues of climate finance were discussed right there. And the proof of pudding is in its eating. We've had a number of agreements which have been reached verbally during this visit. Then, of course, now we have this document, which is India-U.S. Climate and Green Energy Agenda 2030 Partnership. And I said this is going to replace a number of ongoing dialogues. The most important issue in this is how much of technology flows and how much of finance is going to come to India from the United States and how that is going to be made available. So we've got to keep talking and there is no reason not to feel optimistic about it because it's not as if India is turning its back away on the targets for climate change, which the United States is now favoring a lot in the new administration and the President Biden which is not the case under President Trump. But since India has al already been a support of the Paris Agreement along with France and also a co-founder of the International Solar Alliance, it is in the forefront of the fight against climate change. And uh, don't forget that uh, India, China, United States are all big countries who uh, matter a lot to the issue of climate change. And the United States would certainly like to have India on board, especially in the chain circumstances where India is seen as a valued partner across the board over a range of issues. And therefore, on climate, of course, the United States would like to work with India and also accommodate its interests. Mr. Vadva, we've also seen the statements coming out of the U.S. recently. We had the U.S. President Joe Biden and Vice President Kamala Harris both have assured India and the people of India that the U.S. will provide all assistance, including urgently needed medical supplies and equipment to help India combat the outbreak of the corona pandemic. And President Biden has also tweeted that just as India sent assistance to the United States as our hospitals were strained early in the pandemic, we are determined to help India in its time of need. How do you see this outreach by the U.S., especially as you had also pointed out earlier, we did see the United States being a little more cautious and there was this America first thing. But do you feel that maybe sense has prevailed and the world getting together just like India was willing to share the vaccine, the U.S. realizes the value of that cooperation and we have the U.S. now stepping up and reaching out to India just the way India did. Let me get back to what I said earlier on this issue because just a few days ago, the response from the U.S. official spokesperson was something which did not evoke good responses in neither India nor in the United States because I think what has happened is that across the social, political and business spectrum in the United States itself, there has been a criticism for the perceived indifference to India which has been reeling under a COVID-19 wave. So the Biden-Harris uh, dispensation actually, in my view, jolted into action this Sunday, pledging to commandeer all possible supplies and resources to help India in its struggle to contain the pandemic. And that is why you had that statement from President Biden, who said that the United States is determined to help India in its time of need, and he has recalled 
that India also stepped up the plate and helped the United States in its times of need. And this, of course, followed the conversation between the U.S. National Security Advisor Jake Sullivan and Mr. Ajit Doval, the National Security Advisor of India, where he said that the United States is deeply concerned by the severe COVID outbreak in India and that they were working around the clock to deploy more supplies and support to the friends and partners in India as they bravely battled this pandemic. On Saturday, we had a conversation between uh, the External Affairs Minister of India and also the Secretary of State of the United States. So that was also a meaningful conversation in which the damage which was done by that statement of the official spokesperson was undone pretty quickly. And I think it's only because of the fact that the leadership in the United States realized that India is an important partner and it has to be supported in times of need. Also an important partner with regard to partnership in the court for vaccine development. And that's why we've had this landmark change of decision or a change of heart, if you might call it, where we now have assurance that there will be lifting of restrictions imposed on the export of critical raw materials and equipment for vaccine production in India. And in the coming days, we will continue our discussions on the India-U.S. cooperation in various areas, including the U.S. assistance to India as India grapples with the pandemic at home. With this, we bring today's discussion to an end. Thank you. Close House Nomadland has won the award for Best Picture at the 93rd Academy of Motion Pictures, Arts and Sciences AMPS Award today. And the Oscar goes to Nomadland. China Bon Zhao has become the first woman of color to win Best Director and historically diverse group of winners took home awards. Zhao is also only the second woman in Oscar history to win the Academy Award. In the biggest surprise of a socially distanced Oscar ceremony held during the pandemic, Best Actor went to Anthony Hopkins for his performance in the dementia drama The Father. And the Academy Award for Actor goes to Anthony Hopkins, The Father. <clears throat> Frances McDormand won Best Actress for a role in No Bad Land. The Oscar for Best Actress goes to Frances McDormand. In IPL cricket, Punjab Super Kings have set up a target of 124 runs for Kolkata Knight Riders in Ahmedabad. In reply, Kolkata Knight Riders were 102 for 5 in 15 overs when reports last came in. Earlier, Kolkata Knight Riders won the toss and opted to field. Now let us take a look at the major developments around the world as reported in the foreign press. Washington Post writes that a Russian court suspends Navalny's political headquarters while it considers banning his organizations. Wall Street Journal reports that Tesla is expected to post record earnings at the start of turbulent year. A quick look at the headlines once again. Prime Minister Narendra Modi reviews preparations and operations being undertaken by armed forces in combating COVID-19 pandemic. Retired medical personnel being recalled to work in COVID facilities. U.S. lifts export ban on the essential raw materials COVID-19 vaccine production in India. Air India brings 318 oxygen concentrators from the United States. China suspends all its cargo flights to India for 15 days. India and Japan reaffirm cooperation to overcome recent challenges over telephonic interaction between Prime Ministers of both the countries. Nomadland wins Oscar for Best Picture at the 93rd Academy Awards and in IPL Cricket, Kolkata Knight Riders take on Punjab King. India is celebrating the 151st birth anniversary of Mahatma Gandhi. Before we end, let us listen to his favorite bhajan, Vaishnavjan, by artists from Germany. And with that, we end this bulletin. We'll be back at the same time tomorrow with the next edition of World News.